All right, this is constructing models A, number one. It says, on sun Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages every hour for five hours, and Tyrone sent P text messages every hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by both of them? All right, so our keyword there is we're looking for the total. So Armand sent M messages for five hours. All right, each hour. So we take five hours times the number of messages. So that's going to be 5M, 5 times M. And then Tyrone sent P messages every hour for four hours. So Tyrone is going to be 4P. And so the total is, you add those two together, and you're going to get 5M plus 4P. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually pick an M and a P just to make sure. And you could say, you know, hey, Armand sent five, or he sent maybe 10 messages for five hours. Every hour he sent 10, so that would be 50. And then maybe Tyrone did five messages every single hour. So you do like four times five and get 20. Add those together. And then you could go back and plug in the the 10 and the 5 in for the other two, if that helped you. But probably not necessary on this one. So the correct answer here, I guess I never really said the correct answer, would be C. All right, number two. Um, so it looks like we have a pretty big graph. I'm going to try to shrink this down a little bit. So let's just kind of back this down just a little, maybe one more time. There we go. <clears throat> so we have a graph, and it says the total cost of renting the boat per hour. So I'm looking at this thing, and it says, um, which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? So we have an equation there down at the bottom. Well, why don't we just kind of graph what's going on? So when we have H, which represents our hours, and then we have C, which represents our cost, well, according to the chart, zero hours is $5, and that's the y-intercept. Um, one hour, it bumps up to 8. Two hours, we go up to $11, and we don't have to keep going. Maybe I'll do one more. Three is at 14. Now, there's two ways to solve this problem. The first way is you could plug these values in, okay? You could plug in these values from the table until you got to an equation that works down here. All right? So, you know, for instance, if I try 0 for H and 5 for C, I'll notice that the first one does not work because I would get 5 equals 5 times 0 because this was H and this was C. And that doesn't work, so it's gone. Sometimes plugging in a bunch of answers, though, is not the fastest way. The best way is to look at the table and always try to identify the zero in your X column because that ordered pair, that point right there, is the Y-intercept. So I know that in an equation, that represents the back number that doesn't have the variable. So I notice that B and C both have five as the Y-intercept. Um, A and D appear to not have one, but it's actually zero. So if there's nothing there, you can assume the y-intercept is zero. So that would wipe out these two um, just because of the y-intercept. Now I have a decision to make. I have a decision to make about my slope. Is it three quarters or is it three? Well, when looking at a table, slope is pretty easy. It's simply the change. That's a delta. It's a Greek symbol. It represents change. The change in y over the change in x. So let's just see, and I can pick anywhere on the chart. If y is changing by positive 3, and x is changing by 1, that would be a slope of 3. So that kind of wipes out b, and that makes c the winner. Every single one of these pairs would make c true. Now, just to point something out, when you're doing slope off of a table, the numbers don't have to be in order. For instance, 
we could have jumped all the way from here to here, and we could say, well, hey, that's a jump of nine. But over here, this change in x is a jump of three. So even if you were to choose those two, nine over three, you still get the same slope. That's the pretty cool thing about getting slope from a table. Now, first time I ever did this problem, I missed it. And some of you may have chose B because this three quarters, because when you thought slope, you said, oh, I'm going to go up three and over four, which that's the way that it looks. It looks like it's up three over four. But the problem is the, the squares aren't going by ones. All right. One didn't happen until way over here. So that kind of tripped you up a little bit. Totally understand. It happened to me as well. All right, next question. Number three, TV with a price of $300 is to be purchased with an initial payment of $60 and weekly payments of $30. Um, so what are we trying to find? Which of my equations can be used to find the number of weekly payments, W, required to complete the purchase? So the final price is going to be $300. And... We know we need our slope and we need our y-intercept. Well, initial payment represents a y-intercept because that doesn't matter about the weeks. That's just $60. Well, the weeks are tied in with the 30 because you do weekly payments of 30. So that's $30 times every week. And if I made a little table, um, you know, if this was the price and these are the weeks, I can basically come in here and I can pop in my, my price and uh, I can slap some weeks in. So if I do zero for weeks, that's going to come out to be, if I put zero up here, that would be 30 times zero plus 60. So there's my y-intercept, my initial price. Well, at one week, I'm now up to $90. You know, at two weeks, I am now up to $120. And I really don't need to do the math because I see that this is going up 30 for every one that's going up over here. So, so I know that the slope is 30. It's changing y over changing x. So looks like I can just jump right in and see that the answer here is C. Number four, I have a little chart here with shipping charges. Um, it's linear. It says the table above shows shipping charges for a non-time realer linear relationship. Uh, which function can be used to determine the total shipping um, based on the pounds? So this side is our x. These are our pounds. This side is our f of x, or if you'd like to think of it as a y, that's okay too. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to do these. One way is you could simply plug in these numbers. You know, pick a number. I usually never suggest to pick the very top number in the chart, but you could pick a number like 20 and 3179, and then you could plug those in and see if it makes the equation true. So for instance, on part A, if, if I replace the f of x with 3179, and then I replace the x with 20, and I punch that into my calculator, when you actually do it, and you do 0.99 times 20, you're going to see that that really equals... $19.80. So it doesn't work. So this one doesn't work. And then you could keep going through all of them. That's one way. Sometimes that's faster. Sometimes it's slower. A little bit better way. Um, well, not even a better way, but another way would be to find the slope. You know, because I'm looking here and I got slopes of 99 cents or slopes of 339. Slope, remember, is just change in y over change in x. So I could look at the table and I could see what my uh, y's are changing by. So it looks like right here there's a change of $4.95, an increase, so it's positive. And over here we're increasing by 10 pounds, or actually by 5 pounds from 5 to 10. And so when I do that, I get 0.99. So that's my slope. So right there I've wiped out these two. Um, and then if you kind of look at, if you want to try to find the, the y-intercept, you know, this y-intercept is 0. The, this next one's 11. 
the y-intercept, remember, is whenever you have a zero on the chart, that's the y-intercept. So if you kind of run that pattern backwards and subtract $4.95, you're going to be at $11.99. So that right there is going to tell me the correct answer is B. So basically, I used the slope and the y-intercept. But you could also plug numbers in, too. All right, moving on down. Let's go to number five. Um, a helicopter initially hovering 40 feet above the ground. So right away, initial 40 feet tells me that that's a y-intercept. That's your starting point. Um, right now, I can eliminate D because 40 is tied in with the variable, which means that's the slope or that's the rate of change. So get rid of D. Um, and then we begin to gain altitude 21 feet per second. So that's an increase, all right? So we are starting at 40, and we are increasing 21 feet per second. That word per always, this tips me off to this is going to be the slope. Whoop. This is going to be the slope. And this top one, your start, is going to be the y-intercept. So when I build my equation, y equals the slope plus the y-intercept, or the starting point. And it looks like instead of x, we use t, t seconds. So you just got to kind of change that, but it really doesn't, doesn't mess with anything. So the correct answer here is b. They put the y-intercept first and the slope second, but no big deal. All right, moving right along. Number six, a musician has a new song available for downloading or streaming. Um, let me see if I can maybe blow this up just a little bit bigger. Seems a tad small. There we go. And it says a musician earns nine cents each time it is downloaded. So nine cents multiplied by every time it's downloaded. And then... 0.002 cents every time it is streamed. And download was D, streamed is S. So right there is going to be the, the equation. Um, you know, whenever they say each time or per, you know it's multiplication. So the correct answer here will be C. All right, going to the next one, number seven. Um, Looks like this is an inequality one. We've got some less than and greater than symbols. Just a little quick refresher. If it points to the left, that's less than. If it goes to the right, that's greater than. Um, in 2000, there were 175,000 tons of trash in a landfill that had a capacity of 325,000 tons. So picture this landfill. And it has a capacity of 325,000, all right? If the whole thing was full, it'd be 325,000. But uh, in the year 2000, it was at 175, so which is a little more than halfway. So, you know, all of this area right here is full of trash. And we're going to put an arrow there and say that's 175,000. And that was in the year 2000. Um, each year since then, so each year, this is talking about slope, every single year, you are increasing by 7,500. So I'm doing, I'm increasing by 7,500 times every year. I started at 175,000, and my capacity is at 325,000. Now, if, if I put an equal sign in here, if I put an equal sign there, that would tell me exactly how many years before it fills up. But we want to know when it is at or above, or it is greater than or equal to capacity. All right? So something that looks like this is what we're looking for. And it looks like we have it right here 
at D. Last problem, number eight. The number of states that joined the U.S. between 1776 and 1849 is twice the number that joined 1850 and 1900. 30 states joined 76 to 49. X states 50 to 900, which of the following equations is true. I got to draw this out. So 17... 1776 to 1849, okay? That's going to be twice as much. So, so this one should be twice as big as 1850 to 1900. Um, and then it tells me that 30 states were 76 to 49. So there were 30 states up here. And that number's got to be twice the other number. So that means that this must be 15. All right? And it says X is the number of states here. So 15 is our X. So what I need to do is I need to go over here to the equations, and I need to plug 15 in for X and see which one's true. So if I put it in here... 30 times 15, well, that's 450. It's not 2. 2 times 15 is 30. So I believe we have an equation that works. Let's just double check it. 15 divided by 2. No, nope, that's supposed to be 7.5. And, and 15 plus 30 is 45, not 2. So correct answer, B.